For more than 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter in our community. From our studios in St. Clair, you're watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Welcome to another edition of the Focus program. Nice to see you. We are approaching Thanksgiving and we've all had uh, great warnings about what we're supposed to do and not supposed to do. But one of the nice stories of the month is coming out of uh, Risa and a lady by the name of Riley Alley. And she's joining us now from Great Start Collaborative. I finally got the whole word out and I did it correctly. You did, you're impressive. Nice. It took me a while, it takes me a few years. Nice to see you, Riley. Nice to see you too. You brought an assistant over there. I did. Mm -hmm. I did with like the schools closing and stuff. I get a little tag along. You got a little tag along yeah. today. Uh, talk to me about what's happening at Great Start Collaborative, and uh, a specific program that you were with uh, United Way. Yeah. So, you know, we hear all the negative things happening with COVID. It's really hard on everybody. It's hard on a lot of our businesses. Um, but there's some good things that are coming out of it too. And we were able to partner with United Way. Um, we wrote a grant through their COVID funding and we were able to get some cleaning supplies for our child care program. Cleaning supplies. So I know it's something silly you would think to write a grant for, no, no. but when COVID hit, everybody shut down, everybody went home, um, except for our child cares. Our child care stayed open the entire time. They were our frontline staff who were taking care of the kids for our essential workers who were out there who still had to leave their house every day. And so in order to keep their classrooms clean, their children safe, the family safe and healthy, the staff healthy, you know, they really needed to get everything disinfected, cleaned on a regular basis, um, more than they typically do. And so um, they were having a hard time getting the cleaning supplies. Everybody knows you went to yeah. the grocery store, you can't it find anything. You c and all of our child cares, they're small businesses. They're just going to the Myers, the Sam's, you know, like they're going to your local places to get these cleaning supplies. And um, since it was out, we wrote a grant for the, um, for the United Way, and they were able to help us fund um, to buy it in bulk so that we were able to get it all and then get it out to our programs. Did the money come from them or did they go to somebody else with the grant? So this is from United Way. Um, they had actually a specific pot for COVID funding. Okay. Um, and a lot, of our, a lot of it came from donations that were coming in okay. so for this. So, and they may have had some other funding as well, but um, it was very COVID specific, and that was what our need was that we noticed for our child cares. Brought it along a couple pictures, and Sam's going to throw those up, and we'll talk about them. One of them, uh, this one right here, is happens to be uh, Naomi. Uh, Naomi, get up. Yep. yep. And uh, she is, that is the St. Clair uh, TOTS program. It is, yep. And so they were one of them that wrote for us. Um, we kind of just put it out there to all of our programs. If you need cleaning supplies, let us know. Um, and so, so we were able to get some help to them. So you got uh, hand cleaner and, and uh, sprays and, and, and yep. disinfectant? So, so typically in a child care setting, um, even before COVID, we are constantly cleaning. You know, you've got kids putting things in their mouths. We're, um, you know, no, we're eating really? meals. I know we're eating meals. So we're constantly disinfecting the tables. So these are all typical things that we're doing. We just needed to then up it and have it, um, more products in, in the classroom so that they could do it more often than what they would typically do. Idea. So the disinfectant spray could be used for their tables for in between their meals. Um, it could also be used on some of their toys, the hand sanitizer. Everybody knows that we've been using that a yep. lot. Um, you know, we have the kids wash their hands regularly, but sometimes now we're having them do just more often here's some hand sanitizer for you and the next picture is a lady from Port Huron yes yeah, so Miss Nunu she um, has her own program she has um, multiple classrooms um, so we were able to give her a little bit more supplies so that she could have some in each of the classrooms to be able to support hers um, and we had multiple other programs that um, also were able to get the supplies we had about 24 programs I think that Wonderful. we were able to serve Wonderful. so Great Start Collaborative uh, does many things besides apply for grants for good projects like this. Talk to me about the agency, about your, your department. So we do, we do everything um, in, at RESA. We have an early childhood department, which has the Great Start Collaborative in it. We also have the Great Start Readiness Program, which is the free preschool program for four-year-olds. Um, we also have home visiting programs. We have um, early learning groups that happen underneath that. We have early on, which is for children uh, with any sort of um, delay or disability. 
Um, and then we also have the Dolly Parton Imagination Library Program, which is the free books to children zero to five in our county. Dolly started that uh, a while ago, numbers a year, probably 20, 15, 20 years ago now. And you've had it active in St. Clair County for a long time. Yeah, so she started in her own town and then we were able to um, pick it up here she lets anybody hit, do it that can fund it. So we locally can fund it with St. Clair County RESA, United Way, and then we have local grants mm -hmm. and, and donations and fundraisers. Um, but yeah, so we, we were able to do that here uh, about nine years ago. How many uh, books are going out from St. Clair County every month? Round figure. Well, we have about 4,500 children registered wow. in the program right now. Wow, mm -hmm. that's marvelous. Yeah, so it is. And, and that's about that halfway point to serving almost all of the children that are eligible in our county. How do I get involved with that if I'm a new parent and I've never heard of it? So the easiest way is to just Google Imagination Library, okay. um, and then you can put in your address and it'll bring up St. Clair County's information. You can also go to greatstartstclair.org, and we have all the information on there too, and how to register. Okay. Um, how do people avail themselves of your general services? So they can also find out everything at greatstartstclair.org. So if they are interested in free preschool, they can go right to that website, find out all the information, and um, you can actually apply right online. So talk about another good thing that came out of COVID is we've always had pen and paper applications all over right. it. And then everybody's at home and we're getting ready to register for fall. In the spring, we were trying to register for fall and we didn't have anything. So we turned everything around, put it all online. So now you can fully um, apply for the program online. Um, it makes it a lot easier for parents. Probably not. a lot easier for the office Yeah, too. it is. I mean, it's just nice. It comes directly to us right away. We can contact the families and, and try to get them to the right program across the county. Um, the free preschool is in all seven of our school districts. So really, no matter where you are in the county, you can get that okay. access to that. Have we missed anything? I don't think so, but what? there is a lot. So if anybody has children zero to five, greatstartstclair.org has lots of great information for parents. Even if you're not interested in any exact program, you can just find out what we have. Nine, her name is Riley Alley, and she is in charge of Great Start Collaborative, and we're glad you're in the county and glad you're Glad you came to see us today at Focus. Well, thanks for having me. I think your assistant wants to leave over there. <laughs> she might be done. She might be done. We're back with uh, Brian Olatowski. Olatowski. I got it right this time. Close. Uh, close. You're getting better. I'm getting better. In another couple more years, I'll have it down pat. <laughs> we'll be back in just a second. Well, as we alluded to at the top of the uh, show, lots of things going on with COVID and with Thanksgiving, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it was supposed to be a parade, then there wasn't a parade, then there was going to be a, a, a virtual parade, and then nothing. Well, we got an authority to straighten all that out, Mr. <laughs> Brian Ulatowski. Nice uh, to see you. President of the St. Clair Chamber. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Well, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, this has been a crazy time. Yeah. And we just have to make sure that we know what's going on and what's not going on. Right. Uh, you know, so we do have a lot of things coming up in December. Uh, we'll start with the 11th, 12th, and 13th is going to be something brand new. It's the Christmas market that the St. Clair Chamber of Commerce is putting on. Okay. And this has been, I think, going to be a fantastic event. What we're doing is down in the St. Clair Plaza, we're having all the local restaurants have a signature food item and drink item. Okay. And then we're also having all the local retail and bringing in some other people who are not at the plaza in a big tent outdoors okay. to be nice and safe to have vendors out there. So like a pop-up tent for... Exactly. Like they were doing in downtown Detroit a few years ago. E exactly the same thing, but just on a little smaller version for the oh, first time. Right. It's all you right. know, but it's something good to start with that it's we're doing. Quality, down not quantity. Exactly. And we have quality in this town. That's one thing we do have. So it's going to be really great to be able to walk around and everything's going to be outside. And I kind of wanted it to be outside with the restaurants. So you will go outside, you will order, they'll cook it right there for you. Maybe someone's going to be doing sausages, someone doing pretzels. So you can go around and get a little taste of everywhere. It's the on 11th, that, 12th, and 13th. That is correct. Now also, go ahead, I'm sorry. What time? Uh, on Friday, it's from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. On Saturday, the 12th, it's at 11 a.m. till 10 p.m. And on Sunday, it's from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, I got that on my calendar. Now also, in conjunction with that, on Friday night out, out at Greg Park, we're going to have the reindeer. 
The are, reindeer. The reindeer are coming out there. Santa's reindeer. Santa's reindeer are going to be right out there from 5 to 7. Wonderful. Now, also, what we're adding to that is a lot like we did for the Hollow Weekends, the lantern walk. Yeah. Well, now we're going to do one in the wintertime. So hopefully Let there's snow. Let me interrupt snow. you and say I heard great, wonderful things about oh. the, the Halloween walk. That's glad to hear it. We weren't sure for the first time, but it did, you know, sell out with tickets for over 800 people. I no. didn't walk through that in two 800 days. people. 800 people was spectacular. I don't know if we're going to get that turnout for this. It's just more of a nice walk. Hopefully there's a little bit of snow. Yeah. So that will be Friday, December 11th, and that's going to go uh, at Greg Park. Reindeer are from 5 to 7. The walk is from 5 to 9 Okay. on there. Um, then also included in this now is Saturday. We still need to have the big man come into town. Yeah, so yes. Santa will still be coming into town at 11 o'clock. Uh, but I tell you to get down there a little bit early because he's going to come in in a, in a fashionable way. Oh, and okay. we want to make sure you're there for that. He's going to be down in the courtyard for a few hours. If you want to get busy, busy guy. Busy guy. So we're going to only get him for a couple hours. But at least you'll be able to see him if you haven't had a chance to yet. Okay. So that's really the big thing going on that weekend. And along with that, the chamber is doing our sixth annual Christmas stroll. And what that has been is a lot of local businesses donate either trees, wreaths, um, gift baskets, gift cards. And then we put them in a location and we sell raffle tickets for $2 a piece or for six of them, $10. Okay. Now with that, since we're kind of in a position where we're gonna be, um, Warwater Breweries allowed us to use the entire interior since he cannot have people inside. So we'll have all the gifts in there socially distanced so you can buy tickets okay. and then go okay. in there. That starts tomorrow night. Goes through December 13th. We pick the winners on December 13th. You do not need present to win. Okay. And that helps us along with the St. Clair Chamber to do the Hollow Weekends events okay. that we're doing. So this helps build up a little bit and then we get into that for us. Okay. You know, and, and we would love for people in case things have to change. Um, if we go to Facebook and St. Clair's Christmas Market, we are going to keep everyone updated to make sure all the events that we're doing are still going on or if we have to tweak them and change them in any ways. Okay, very good. Well, I think we've covered it. Uh, it's it's an exciting time. You just have to do it a little differently. That's all it is this year. It's still going to be fun. The lights are gorgeous. They were gorgeous last year. And they'll be. And they're even more spectacular this it, year. Yep. And you're looking on that for Friday night somewhere around 6 o'clock. Get ready for downtown to be lit up. Okay. Everywhere. Uh, on both sides and also in the plaza, there was a, another, you'll see another big tree that was donated by uh, St. Clair Irrigation and Lawn and the Wellington Financial. Good. So just something to get a little bit of excitement on that side. Okay, very good. All right, uh, that's the, your invitation to uh, come to downtown uh, uh, St. Clair, the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th. Lots of activities for you and for your family and for the kids. So uh, make sure that you uh, mark those days down. Friday uh, the 11th from 5 till 10, Saturday from 11 a.m. till 10 p.m., and uh, Sunday from 11 till 5. Um, that's uh, about it for this edition of the Focus Program. Mr. Ulotowski, we thank you for stopping in, and we'll have you back again. Thanks for we'll having back. me. We'll, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Focus is produced at the CTV Community Television Studios in St. Clair. For over 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter to our community.